Good morning! Today we are going to extend our understanding of relative motion by including a vector that is not in one of the cardinal directions. Hey guys. Hey Bob. Uh, hi Bob. Flippin' physics. Billy, could you please read the problem? Sure. A toy car travels at 42 millimeters per second at an angle of 18 degrees east of north relative to a piece of paper that is moving at 71 millimeters per second west relative to the earth. What is the velocity of the toy car relative to the Earth? And now, Billy, could you please read the problem again? And Bobby, could you please translate? A toy car travels at 42 millimeters per second at an angle of 18 degrees east of north relative to a piece of paper. Uh, please write V with a subscript of C and then P for the velocity of the car relative to the paper, and it equals 42 millimeters per second at an angle of 18 degrees east of north. Billy, please continue reading. Relative to a piece of paper that is moving at 71 millimeters per second west relative to the Earth. V sub P and then E for the velocity of the paper with respect to the Earth equals 71 millimeters per second west. Billy, what is the velocity of the toy car relative to the Earth? V sub C and then E for the velocity of the car with respect to the Earth equals question mark. Thank you both. Now let's visualize the problem. We know the car moves at 42 millimeters per second at an angle of 18 degrees east of north with respect to the paper. In other words, if the toy car were not on top of the paper, it would move at an angle of 18 degrees east of north. However, because the car is on top of the paper, which is moving at 71 millimeters per second west, the car moves in a different direction relative to the earth. Please. Take a moment and point in the general direction you think the car is going to move when we place it on the paper. You are all correct. The paper will pull the car westward and the car will end up moving somewhere between north and west. Now, let's place the car on the paper and watch the result. You can see that we get exactly what you all suggested. The car moves somewhere between north and west. Let's add the tip-to-tail vector diagram. You can see the velocity of the car with respect to the earth is the resultant vector of the sum of the velocity of the car with respect to the paper and the velocity of the paper with respect to the earth. Now, let's write out that equation. Sorry, Mr. P, but I have to ask, haven't we already done this problem? Yeah, the vector addition equation was exactly the same, and the vector diagram was almost identical. That is a good question and a good observation. And Bo, it is your phrase almost identical, which is why we're going through this problem. I know the relative motion vector addition equation is identical. However, because one of the vectors is not in a cardinal direction, it makes the math more complicated. Okay. That makes sense, thanks. Good. Bo, could you please begin solving the problem? Well, if you look at the relative motion equation, the velocity of the car with respect to the earth equals the velocity of the car with respect to the paper plus the velocity of the paper with respect to the earth. So it's just 42 plus 71, which is 113 millimeters per second. <laughs> That's pretty easy. Oh, Bo, if only it were that easy. You forgot that these are vectors, so we need to use the Pythagorean Theorem to find the magnitude of the velocity of the car with respect to the Earth. Uh, <laughs> we can't use the Pythagorean Theorem because that's not a right triangle. Oh, Blimey, you're right! <laughs> blimey? Components. We need to break the velocity of the car with respect to the paper into its components because it's not directly in the x or y direction. Then we can make a right triangle. And Bob's your uncle! <laughs> Yes, what is different about this problem versus the previous problem is that the velocity of the car with respect to the paper is not in one of the cardinal directions. Therefore, we need to break or resolve it into its component vectors in the x and y directions. Billy, could you please do that? <laughs> sure, Mr. P. Um, we need to start by drawing the vector diagram with the components of the velocity of the car with respect to the paper. 
Then we know the sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. So sine theta equals the velocity of the car with respect to the paper in the x direction divided by the velocity of the car with respect to the paper. Now we can multiply the equation by the velocity of the car with respect to the paper in the x direction to get the velocity of the car with respect to the paper in the x direction equals the velocity of the car with respect to the paper times the sine of theta. With numbers, that is 42 times the sine of 18 degrees, which works out to be... 12.979 millimeters per second. Thanks, Bo. Uh, and, and we can do the same thing with the cosine of theta, uh, which equals adjacent over hypotenuse, or the velocity of the car with respect to the paper in the y direction, divided by the velocity of the car with respect to the paper. Multiply by the velocity of the car with respect to the paper in the y direction to get that it equals the velocity of the car with respect to the paper times the cosine of theta, which equals 42 times the cosine of 18. 39.944 millimeters per second. Yep. And now we can redraw our tip-to-tail vector diagram. And you can see that we now have a right triangle, which means that we can use the Pythagorean theorem and SOHCAHTOA. Bobby, please keep going. Okay, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, so the velocity of the car with respect to the earth squared equals the... What do we do in the x direction? Just add the two vectors together. Oh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Thanks, Bob. Uh, so it equals the velocity of the paper relative to the earth plus the velocity of the car relative to the paper in the x direction. That quantity squared plus the velocity of the car with respect to the paper in the y direction squared. Take the square root of the whole equation and we get the velocity of the car with respect to the earth is equal to the square root of the velocity of the paper relative to the earth plus the velocity of the car relative to the paper in the x direction. Uh, quantity squared plus the velocity of the car with respect to the paper in the y direction squared. Now we can plug in numbers. Uh, we get the square root of 71 plus 12.979 quantity squared. No, hold up, Bobby. It should be negative 71, not positive. Because the velocity of the paper with respect to the Earth is west, which is negative. Yeah, thanks, guys. So the square root of negative 71 plus 12.979 quantity squared plus 39.944 squared, which equals... 70.442, uh, and we need two sig figs, uh, 70 with two sig figs. That's 7.0 times 10 to the first millimeters per second. Thanks, guys. You're welcome. Seventy with two sig figs, or seven point zero times ten to the first millimeters per second, is the magnitude of the resultant velocity vector. Now we need the direction. Bo? We can use cosine of theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse, and that's the velocity of the car relative to the paper in the y direction over the velocity of the car with respect to the earth. Take the inverse cosine, and we get theta equals the inverse cosine of the velocity of the car relative to the paper in the y direction over the velocity of the car relative to the earth, or the inverse cosine of the 39.944 over 70.442 which is uh, 55.455 degrees with two sig figs, 55 degrees. Uh, so the velocity of the car relative to the Earth is 7.0 times 10 to the first millimeters per second at an angle of 55 degrees west of north. And Bob's your uncle. Thank you very much for learning with me today. I enjoyed learning with you.